I also had a hand, a mom from Argyle ISD and a parent. Representing yourself. Yes, and I am the vice president of Women on the Wall, but I am not representing Women on the Wall today. I am a mom. Okay. Introduce yourself for the record. Great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alice Linehan, and I am a mom from Argyle ISD, a 4A Lone Star Cup winning, state champion athletic winning, outstanding star passing school district. On paper, we look amazing. And I know that Argyle ISD will work hard and diligent to receive an A rating but I want to give you a little reality check. The next generation of assessments, conceptual frameworks coming into our schools, which were piloted and funded in Texas through Senate Bill 1557, which put in place the High Performance Consortium that is the pilot program for the next generation of assessments and accountability. And their concept themes can be described as transdisciplinary in purpose. Transdisciplinary is the function of the subject matter, concept themes in the syllabus, the course frameworks that are used to guide how a student views the world. The technical term most commonly used is lenses. Effectively, these lenses become the values, attitudes, and beliefs the students are to be taking away from the curriculum. This is about changing the next generation of American children's worldview. And let me give you a personal story of what that looks like in the classroom with my own daughter at Argyle ISD, which is how our children are being deemed whether they're college and career ready. For a little background, my daughter was the only one in the school district who was not issued a Chrome uh, book because as her parents, we did not want her on a district issued technology device. One day she texted me from right after her AP English 3 class screenshots of a quiz that her teacher who told her to take it on her iPhone because she couldn't take it on her Chromebook, um, had given to the class. This class is an English class, but they were talking about philosophy in this class. The teacher was using one of the four C's, which she's now trained to do. She was using collaboration, so she broke the class down into groups, and they were given a philosophy. And then they had to do research on that philosophy, so they went and took this quiz online. The quiz was 30 questions that asked things like, do you believe there's an almighty God? Do you believe that atheism is a religion? Do you believe that homosexuality is unnatural? Do you believe that children should be protected at all costs? Do you believe that the Holocaust happened as described in the textbooks? Then this quiz created, or this website created a tension score and gave a report. And where there was a conflict in the students' answers, it gave a report. And let me read for you from my daughter's report. It says, you agree that there exists an all-powerful loving God and good God. And you also said that to allow an innocent child to suffer needlessly when one could easily prevent it is morally reprehensible. These two beliefs together generate what is known as the problem of evil. The problem is simple. If God is all-powerful, loving, and good, that means that he can do what he wants and will do what is morally right. But surely this means that he would not allow an innocent child to suffer needlessly as he could easily prevent it. Yet he does. Much infant suffering in is the result of human action, but much, much is also due to natural causes like disease and famine. In both cases, God could stop it. 
yet he does not. You can take the quiz for yourself in your packet. I gave you the link. After taking this quiz, clinical mental health counselor Joan Land stated, this is a classic psychological deconstructive technique to put a person in a double bind and collapse their cognitive framework. I'll say that again. Collapse their cognitive framework. As a mother, this infuriates me. And when I went to ask my daughter's advanced placement English teacher why she had the students take this online quiz, she, meant, she mentioned that her job was to teach these kids to critically think for their jobs in the workforce. She had no problem with the online quiz. She did not say that her job was to teach them English. As a mom, I expect that my, I send my child to school to learn English, to learn math, to learn history, knowledge-based academic skills. I hope, now that my time is done, that you'll take the time to ask me what I really think about this teacher and her teaching strategies. I've written about it in this book, your Child's Number One Threat, 21st Century Learning and the Common Core, which includes stories from moms and dads across Texas. This is not an isolated incident. Whose children are being harmed like my child in the classroom. And we're the parents in a school district that on your accountability system would be seen as doing great things. But the reality is much different in the classroom and I will tell you for those children who are in those school districts who aren't using who aren't uh, reaching those star assessments imagine what they're being taught in the classroom that you don't even know about it I know that a lot of times we would look at a teacher and blame a teacher for something that happens in that classroom because ultimately it's the teacher that gives the lesson. But I'm not here to have a grievance against this teacher. I want you to see that your responsibility, ultimately curriculum in Argyle ISD is the superintendent's responsibility. But it's also your responsibility because your key role is to allocate funds that come into the district. And so you are approving funds for the professional development of the teacher and the administrators. And you're approving the funds for the technology that is used. It's those kids who are here tonight who are going to be impacted because now their data can be collected from preschool through the workforce and as they get rid of the star test or the end of course exams and they create an individual portfolio on a portfolio on a child that portfolio will follow that child through the workforce and you may not have all the power instead of just signing off on any professional development but to say who are the people teaching at this professional development what are the learning theories? Who is Lev Vodotsky? Who is Grant Wiggins? Who is Robert Marzano? These people, Lev Vodotsky, who a lot of these learning theories and what's coming into the classroom, he's a behavioral psychologist from the Soviet Union. And most people don't know that. Most teachers who are implementing these learning theories, they don't know that. So I don't blame the teachers. I don't blame you, but you've been forewarned. And that's why I had to take out my, la my youngest child, because I know what's coming. There's a shift happening in education today. But, and they'll say it's 21st century learning. This is not 21st century learning. There was a push for this in the late 60s, early 70s, again in the late 80s and early 90s. And now again, in the 80s and 90s, it was deemed outcome-based school to work. 
it was pushed back against by moms and dads and teachers because they knew how harmful this was to our children. And I'll close with this. This shift in education, whether you call it college and career ready, 21st century learning, innovative, Every Student Succeeds Act. It's a shift away from an education of opportunity, equal opportunity, because children in the classroom are learning knowledge-based skills, reading, writing, how to do math, and they know history. This, what is happening and what you've talked about all this morning is about an education of equity and equal outcomes based on attitudes, values, beliefs, and behaviors and changing the next generation's worldview. There's a huge impact that has happened now that the Common Core has hit 45 states. In Texas, we have the same learning theories and teaching strategies. It's just called College and Career Ready. We have the same pre-K through the workforce system where we're collecting data on my children. And it's a shift away from the mental, academics, knowledge-based assessments, end of course tests, to behaviors and performance standards and competencies for the workforce. The ideology behind this is to change America's worldview from nationalism to globalism. And it allows for government controlled economy. There's a French word that's used in other countries. Right hand, I'm sorry, your, your time this is my long very inspired. last sentence. It's called Dirigis, and it means a state directed economy. I did not have my three children to be human capital for the state of Texas. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions? Thank you, panel.